This is my garage. And what we have right here is a 2023 Land Rover Defender. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my favorite features and some cool tips and tricks that I found that I'd like to share with you guys about my experience when it comes to daily driving the Defender. Now, this is the second time I feature a Defender on my channel, but I felt like that video was rushed. I just like, didn't really have a private space like I do now. So this is a full, in-depth, everything there is to know about this car. Let's get started. So backing up a bit, I do have the window sticker of this car. And this Defender is a 2023 Defender 110 SE. And the MSRP price on the window is 69000 but with all the options, the one we have here is 85,000. And the options that we have, well, for starters, we do have the new mid hybrid engine, as this is an inline six that puts out 395 horsepower and around 405 pound feet of torque. It is tied with an eight speed automatic transmission, features all wheel drive. And the additional options that we have here is the code climate, which features a heated windshield, heated washer jets, heated steering wheel and headlight power washer, which I'll talk more about those in a little bit. We have the advanced off-road package as well as the off-road package, the family package, which offers a three dual climate control, air suspension. So it's fairly loaded for this price. And for those headlight washer jets, here they are located right here. I'll go ahead and demonstrate how those look like. Yeah, they work just like that. Of course, they're more desirable to be used like during like mud terrains or snow, maybe snow actually, not so much snow. But if your headlights are dirty and you're off-roading, sandy, dusty, not snow, then that'll help clear it out and allow you to maintain visibility. Now under the hood, I do want you guys to check out how it looks like as I did already took liberty and removed the engine cover. And this is how that mile hybrid inline six looks like. Airbox runs over here, goes through there. And the throttle body is actually located down here. It seems like very traditional British, Germany, European type of cars. And then the battery is located somewhere else inside the vehicle because the terminals are exposed right here, but no car battery. Now, with the bonnet closed, basically the hood, I still don't know what these designs of this roof is. It's not a racing track because this is plastic. It's not paint like the aluminum panels are. This is actually plastic, but it wants me to make me believe that this is for situations where you have to stand on top of your vehicle. At least you have grip protector here so you don't slide off, nor does it cause damage to the car. But if you know exactly what this is for, comment down below. But my theory is this is for if you have to step on the roof or get up here or something, you at least have some type of walkway patterns that won't harden the car. That's what I want to believe. And you do have functional air vents on the side right here. They're not there for a look. They actually do allow the engine to receive some air and pull that hot air out of the engine bay. I like that. Now I know this is not a hidden feature, but I just like to point out that unlike some other cars, notice the door handle, all of them have that button to lock or unlock the vehicle right here. I like that. Some cars only have the driver's side only or only the front two doors. This one's all four doors. And right here you do have a projector that points down welcoming lights as I like to call them. But this one will project the the Defender, and it's pretty high definition. Now, enough of that. Let's talk about the hidden features. So this is the Defender's key fob, very similar to other Land Rover key fobs. Basically, this is how it looks like. And one of the cool features you could do is the capability to raise and lower the vehicle in case of an emergency or you're loading something in the back. So to activate this, you do have to go inside the vehicle itself and turn on your hazards with the hazards flashing you then want to go grab your key fob and lock the vehicle and I'll then unlock and then press and hold the headlight button as well as the lock button. And you see here, we are raising the rear side for loading purposes and then it slightly raises up the front. Again, that is the headlight button as well as the unlock button to raise and then to lower, just do the headlight and lock button. And now we are lowering the vehicle. So if an event would happen, I'm pretty sure those two features will come in clutch and help you out. If for whatever some reason you're camping near your vehicle, uh, funny thing is I've discovered is if you put the key like above the roofs, if you have one of those cargo roof thingies, 
the vehicle does not unlock see but if i grab the key i'm like it unlocks so that's pretty cool and if you like to disable the uh proximity sensor pulse that it has for like theft or if you're camping nearby on the ground next to your car and you don't want somebody sneak in and just have access to your interior a way to disable this we have to go inside the car so you got to turn on the car and then turn off the car and then tap the headlight button three times and one on lock and then your hazard will go off as it just did so now if i go up to the car and try unlocking it it doesn't do anything it just gives me feedback that somebody's trying to break in my car using my key fob and you're not locked out because you just simply unlock it and it will unlock it but to restore this you need to repeat the process you enable this you need to make sure your door is open repeat the process turn on the engine and turn it back off hit the flash three times and then lock i mean lock and then now it should work so let's see yep open it locks and also unlocks i mean and that's how you enable this now for the 2024s this is the first time you can actually buy an extended length portion for the defender but for the 2023s it's only this one that option wasn't available but now it's available for 2024s but let me open up the back here there still is plenty of storage back here this is the storage space you're left with a lot of door opening space perfect for a costco hauls but if you look over here so long as you have the airbag suspension of course you have these two buttons that allows you to lower and raise the car from back here and yes you can increase it i thought that was really cool and for the rear seats we have to remove the cargo carpet now with the seats photo you do have a little bit more storage space as well this is where you'll see your floor jack and that's about it you have a household outlet over here which is quite nice and you have another 12 there as well lights hooks right here for your grocery bags and if you don't get the third row option there's a loading zone climate control knob right here the previous defender i featured had that for your dogs and so we'll have ventilated vents back there but this one does not have that so just keep that in mind without the third row you do have like a dog vent back here and i gotta say this car is easy to travel your pets with because it's boxy over here it's basically like a kennel already for them so it's really easy to make them contain in this general area instead of them naturally wanting to hop over it's pretty nice for that feature and you'll find them located right here and you simply just pull out And there you go you have a third row for the defender it's a bit claustrophobic yes i know but if you do have to carry more people you easily do so or you give yourself a lot of space by folding down the middle row which i could demonstrate right now but before i do that there's a little lever right here because if i quickly sit in the back in the mid row this is not only adjustable you could adjust like the distance if you want it back or more forward but you can also recline this the second row if you like to for your rear occupants and the center armrest actually can fold even back to give you like a little miniature table right here for like french fries or hamburgers or something like that if you need some uh, kind of storage but of course you have your center row armrests as well with cup holders but back to the folding down seats real quick fold it down let's go ahead and hop in the back oh all right so this is how you'll be likely to sit back here if uh the center row seats are folded down you could tell there's barely any space as this is literally how much room you have back here you literally don't have any room at all for legs actually but you do have cup holders and your mounting hooks right here if you keep in case you need it and you have actual seat belts back here as well 12 volt outlets are located on both sides which I thought was kind of interesting. There's hooks right here for a privacy cargo cover. And of course you have the iconic Safari windows, which do support Land Rover accessories to uh, put like, I don't know, a, a net here somewhere. 
and then you got speaker openings here a little big moon roof which which if you get the extended cab you have another moon roof over here but uh yeah uh i am 5'8 and i have plenty of head space don't get me wrong but leg room non-existence you it's impossible to sit back here here i'll fold this seat back up to give you an idea that's how much leg space you have and that's the seat unless i sit sideways uh there is no room back here whatsoever no i can't this is this is how i'm sitting i can't even fit my camera back here that's how bad it is but you do have a latch right here to open it up to escape but if we do move the mid row a little bit forward maybe it's possible but that's how much more space you could give yourself if you do move the mid seat a little bit upwards now i have leg room look at this if you move the front if you do move the mid seat all the way to the max distance you can actually fit your room your legs here comfortably so you probably can get away with two mid-sized adults back here and you also have this compartment right here to hold like your flasks or those big old water bottles right here but your cup holders are actually located here this is actually doable actually but i'm sitting in a very straight position just saying and then this is how much space you give yourself if you do scoot the seat a little bit more so uh it's it's cramp but you can pull it off if in case you really have to hold a total of six people. All right, now let's get inside the Defender and talk about the cool little software goodies we have back here. Yeah, I'm sorry, we kind of did this the reverse way. We went from the back and now we're in the front. But just like the previous time I reviewed the Defender, it's nice and gorgeous in here. There's a lot of rugged material. Everything is nice, clean. The designers did an excellent job in terms of designing this vehicle to make it feel not only luxurious, but also minimalistic and also rugged. As you can find old snip handles on your left or right side. You got your handles over here. There's additional storage in the back of the screen with access to a USB-C port. There's plenty of storage, even additional storage down here, which goes right here. And then you have this storage compartment, which again folds down. So allows your rear passengers to use it as a table if they need to. This can be optioned to be a mini fridge in here, but we just have the standard, but even the standard is pretty big. Wireless charging cup holders, which fit the oversized bottles you typically would carry to like the gym and stuff like that. I'm actually able to hold that. USB-C, USB-A, as well as a 12 volt outlet here. Your airbag suspension is all can be all be controlled right here as you can increase or decrease the height off to go all right here. But if you like to lock it to the lowest position, you just lower it and then hold on to it until this little lock icon turns into a solid orange amber color now it's locked and to get out of this you have to hold it up on the top and then that's how you unlock it so you can readjust the height your push to start to located here and then your engine auto stop button can be located here if you don't like that your climate controls right here you push to use your ventilated seat or your heated seat for both the rear and for both the driver and passenger side heated steering wheel button is located here your lane keep assist can be enabled or disabled right here climate control buttons your additional controls right here to navigate between the little screens that it has going volume knob yeah it's pretty much self-explanatory at this point this diamond button is your favorite button by long holding. This will quickly take you to the customization ability where you could do a short press or a long press to change certain things. So if we do a short press, we could allow the vehicle to launch an app automatically, cancel guidance, your media control, other, screen off, phone, change sources. You could change it all right here. So if I want the shortcut button to launch my cameras, that's how you do it. So a single tap will do that. 
a long press, I could change it so it quickly takes me to mute. So by doing that, if I short press, it will automatically show me my 360 camera and a long hold will mute the audio that I'm listening to. Now in the 360 mode, you do have the ability to basically see everything around this car. So if you're off-roading in extreme situations and you don't have a spotter, you can just select one of the angles. And you can see the distance, clearance, and all that stuff right here. And definitely helps out, especially when you're parking as well. You even have off-road views right here as well. You can monitor the wheels. And if you drive around, the vehicle is able to save the video so you can see underneath the car while you're using the 360 camera as well. And here you have the, and then here you also have the ability to lock your rear as well as your front differentials. And you can monitor your airbag suspensions as well. Towing, this car can tow about 8,000 pounds from my understanding and just give you a better clearance of your tow hitch right here. And you can actually allow it to play feedback noise if you like to. Now in the instrument cluster, this is an all digital instrument cluster and you can customize this as you could have it with this layout where you can see your trip, your 4x4, your drive assistance. You could have it as a digital clock or you could have it this as an empty panel, all personal preference. Navigation can also be located right here if you like to. But other cool ones can be located in the display layouts. Here you can select a one gauge dial if this is more up your alley. Again, you could customize both left and right as you see right here, and you have a good amount of selections. So if you like to see two information clusters, you could do that as your RPM and miles per hour gauge is all located in the middle, including your fuel gauge. You have a lot of freedom to customize this to your own personal preference. And then if you like a normal map layout, of course this is all gonna be blurry to respect the person's privacy, but this is how it looks like with just a map layout. I think it's pretty clean. I think this is my personal, personal favorite have all the media stuff in the center and your important stuff right here or you can have it into your media control and you can have that layout as well the driving assist this is how it looks like think of a tesla that's kind of like how this feels like and of course you have a heads-up display not sure if that will show up on the camera but the heads-up display does show your speed your driving assistance like lane keep assistance your gear that you're in as well as your miles per hour of course it does have auto high beams as well as automatic windshield sensing wipers for the rear control you control it right here as well and an interesting thing is uh your hood latch is located right here but when you close the door it protects you from accidentally opening it apparently i don't know how that works but yeah that's a that's a thing so you have to open the door in order to open up your hood instead of Traditionally, have your door closed and just um, open it in case somebody needs to have access to it for you on your behalf. It's interesting. Of course, you have memory seats up to three. And your window controls are located here for your side view mirrors, which do feature a blind spot monitoring. And if you like to fold the mirrors in, in case you're off-roading, you press both left and right at the same time. And it'll automatically fold down your mirrors. Now, there is an optional digital rear view mirror. This one doesn't have it, but you do have your memory buttons right here for your garage. And uh, this one does not have the sun visor for your glasses, I'm sorry, your glass sunglasses storage. This one does not have that, but it'll be located right here. But you can find your motion sensor for your security located here, as well as your uh, sun visor or moonroof settings right here. And you can open it fully if you really want to. It's massive too. And then of course, here is your sun visor with your mirror control, your little slot right there to hold your parking tickets. It's a pretty nice car, but now let's talk about the software aspect of things a little bit more into detail. So you do have your mode selector, but real quick, the windshield of this car is heated because if you look closely, not sure if it'll show on camera, but there's little lines right here, which help a lot in situations where your window gets fogged up. This makes sure that the window, your windshield never fogs up. So very similar to the technology you'll see from the back that you'll see on the back on some cars. This one has it on the windshield, which I thought was kind of impressive. Now your mode selector will be located right here. Just, just tap the little box car icon right here. And you use this knob to go between gravel mode, mud, sand, rock crawl, 
waves, figure roll setting. If you like to customize it to your own personal settings, you can do that. And you can actually config right here on the display. You can change between your, your differentials, the powertrain, if you want it to be extremely responsive or relaxed, the steering wheel, the traction control, or you can reset it all entirely. And you can name it as well. But in 4x4 information, this is basically what we were able to see earlier when we had the cameras engaged, but in a bigger surface. Make the car to go to sport mode, just move the shifter. Now you're in sport mode, plus, minus your transmission gears. And if you like to know how much clearance you have, depending on the airbag suspension mode you selected, if you go into the all apps section right here and go into vehicle dimension, in our lowest settings, if we switch to feet, we have six feet of clearance in the front, correct? Now, if we increase it, giving ourselves eight feet of clearance. And then if we go to the max setting, okay, it's not allowing us to go to our max setting because we have the passenger door open, but it's 11 inches. But all this updates in real time, including the heights in case you're trying to clear like a drive through or something. And you could change the right height as you're driving along, so long as you don't go over 40 miles per hour. And then other apps you have access to is navigation, accounts, seats. Seats don't really do much outside from like your heated seats. You could adjust all that here. Your climate control can digitally be controlled as well or physically controlled over here. And you do have the air quality capability to monitor the purification inside the car, the exterior, and we'll even give you a little graph right here to give you an understanding how clean the air is inside or out. And then cameras, of course, I already showed you earlier. That's basically this menu. Valet mode basically allows you to put this vehicle in a pin lock to limit the valley driver to do things you don't want it to do, like achieve a certain speed. You do have eco mode, which will keep tabs of your previous MPG journeys. And it will also give you access to a in energy impact, like your AC, heated seats, heated steering wheels, headlights, will tell you how much those anemones are taking an impact to your energy. And eco tips, like self-explanatory stuff, just drive efficiently and of course your history so on average this car is averaging around i say like 14 miles per gallon and it also keeps track of your drive score too on a highway apparently i was doing 40 miles per gallon so you can get some good mpg mileage out of this car if you really try and then low traction launch you could actually start a low traction launch right here by deflating your air if in case you have to if you're stuck you could totally do that Kind of like launch control, but just think about it being stuck in sand. And then voice commands, phone does have wireless CarPlay and Apple Auto and Android Auto. Your media control, air quality, I just showed you that. This does have wade sensing. So if you're driving through like a river, you could maintain the water levels right here and make sure you're in a safe zone before it actually goes inside your car. This is actually one of the only vehicles from my understanding that has this ability and this Defender has it. Your towing basically will allow you to add your trailer right here and save all that stuff. And of course it has Alexa. And then the last app that this Defender comes with can be located right here where it says connected accounts. You can actually put a SIM card in this car to give yourself LTE as you're seeing like we have 4G reception right here. But this one has it expired. And if you tap in settings, it'll take you to a quick screen brightness adjuster your auto theme if you want to go from dark mode to light mode automatically your auto hold brake can be located here your audio controls can be quickly change right here and then all basically will, this will give you quicker access to everything you need to change in this vehicle which in vehicle let's see what we have here service information driver assistance you could adjust all this on the go if you need to, but you can also adjust it on the steering wheel. Aid parking, this car does feature that. Front collision warning, you can actually adjust the sensitivity or turn it off completely. Emergency braking, this car does have that. Emergency lane keep assist. Driver, driver condition monitoring, it'll tell you if you've been driving too long, to go take a break. Safety features, last alarm trigger, this has, does hold a history. You'll see it right here. Audible lock warning, two stage unlocking, drive away, mild locking. If you like to decrease or increase it, you can, so the doors could automatically lock. Exterior lighting, you could change the seconds if you want your 
light to stay on a little bit longer than 30 seconds or you could turn it off completely convention so was to convince it yeah i can't even pronounce that i can't even speak right now just i'm gonna skip that <laughs> you could go in windows to do global close or open if you want your key fob to automatically have this ability to open or close automatic roof blind automatically opens the roof blinds of the vehicle start and automatically close when the vehicle is locked so basically this if you want this to automatically close or lock whenever you lock or unlock the vehicle you could enable that that's a cool little hidden feature right there not a lot of cars have that mirror damp on reverse if you put this vehicle in reverse your side mirror will point downwards so you can see the lines when you're backing up you could turn that off if you don't like it vehicle access automatically access hike so you could let this vehicle automatically lower to the lower right height to assist you in making going in and out of the vehicle automatically instead of manually having to do it right here your rain sensing wipers you could enable or disable that in the wiper section winter wiper pack wipers will use a higher parking position so if you're in the snow you can enable this and your wipers will be in a higher position so it doesn't get frozen in with all the snow i love that it has that ability and units, of course, if you're in Canada, you'll switch to kilometers per hour. But we are here in the States. Miles per hour is what we use. Same goes for PSI, as well as climate temperature. Whew, so that was a lot, but that is a lot to take in. In general, you'll find voice assistant settings. Uh, you could add a wake word by saying, hey, Land Rover. It will automatically start listening, like right now. Stop listening. Or if you don't want this and you like to make a custom wake word, you can enable this. The screen will prompt you to ask for the wake word it wants to listen to. So you can actually enable that. I think that's pretty advanced if you want to customize it. Media, show online, show enabled. That's pretty much self-explanatory. Display settings, map display automatic. Or if you want dark mode all the time or light mode, you can change that. Stealth mode, cabin light is dimmed when the screen is off. Personal preference, kind of cool. Keyboard click, I like that because I like to feed, uh, receive feedback when I'm using the keyboard on the screen. Master pin is use activation on ballet mode. You don't have to worry about that because once you activate a ballet mode, you can do it there as I showed earlier. Time, system restore. If you sold this vehicle, you want to go ahead and do that. So nothing saved, including your phone. And uh, yeah. Ooh, that's a lot <laughs> and then for a customization here these are your widgets and if you like to customize it to do show you other stuff if you go all the way to the very right you can tap this little pencil icon and here you could adjust what you want to see and what you not you don't want to see so if you want to remove some of the stuff you want to take off like this we're not going in a river anytime soon you really don't care about your 4x4 information your efficiency number or compass you could turn that off remove it so now we only have these three icons but by removing this of course you notice we remove like the different photos we have access to personal preference of course and long hold here allows you to rearrange these if you like to do that as well or even if you like to change like the shortcuts you have right here you could click and drag these to be saved over here for somebody that didn't save that one there we go let me demonstrate see but i like having quick access to my camera so if there's an app that you want to hot save right here on the side, you have full freedom to do so. The window open, and if I go ahead and lock the car, it automatically closes it. But it didn't close all the way because I left the actual window open, but it did close that portion of it. So now hopping in the back seat. Ugh. I have the car turned off because we are in the garage, so it would not be wise having a running engine in here. But backing this all the way back, Again, plenty of leg space in a full back position. I have a lot of head space. And here you could support, has support for accessories. If you want to mount like an iPad or a coat hanger, Land Rover sells the accessories on their website, which you attach right here. Cubbies, uh, USB C ports, or USB A ports, two USB A ports, a blank here for some reason, and another blank. Not sure why, but you'll find your HVAC controls right here as well as the positions and uh, air vents. Yeah, pretty standard, basic back here. And that is the 2023 Defender in a nutshell. Now, something I almost forgot to mention is the 2024s. Uh, 
massive improvement on the 2024s from the 2023s to my knowledge again it's the optional extended back but the main benefit difference between the two is the larger center console entertainment screen it's slightly bigger than this one that's about it though drivetrain and wise and everything else is pretty much the same anyways that's basically everything there is to know about the defender and its cool features and some cool tips and tricks i wanted to share with you guys so if this video was informative and useful leave a like as that is a great way to train the youtube algorithm on your side to continue recommending videos that you like and if you really did like my video make sure to also subscribe for more car content as i do plan on uploading uploading a bunch of in-depth videos just like this every wednesday so if you enjoy these videos make sure you are subscribed and feel free to comment down below requests you want me to get my hands on could be new or old anyways thanks so much for watching take care and i'll catch you in the next one